Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is I'm still Angie, this is still 4F Beauty and hopefully you are watching me in black and white right now. If you're not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. If you are, panic not. This is my my homage to the Wizard of Oz, where it starts off black and white, and then we get colour. But I don't drop any houses on witches' heads to steal their shoes. Although well, those shoes were pretty. Anywho. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you bother to read any of it, the description. Don't worry, I very rarely read the description until after the film myself. Uh, this is my first impression and review with the Viseart Dark Edit palette. Now this is the one that most people wanted to see that I uh, showed you my haul video. And this was the one that most people wanted me to use first. So, if you want to find out which colours I chose, how it performs, and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, Sammy's here. You have the best seat in the house. It's time, my lovelies. Grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy. Here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I know, it's it's been a while, I'm sorry. Um, pain just, it won, basically. Um, I'm not proud to admit that it won, but Sadly, it did. However, I am now back and I put a post up on Insta and on Twitter asking which of all the hauled palettes that I'd got did you want to see first. And this one, the Viseart Dark Edit, this got the most votes. Now, I managed to pick this up on Depop, so it's not perfect, it has got a little bit of damage to the bottom row as you can see, but still plenty enough shadows there that I can use them and create a look with it. So, I am super happy that you chose this one because I've been wanting to, to play with this ever since it arrived. I think I know what look I'm going to do. But you know what I'm like, sometimes I change my mind halfway through. This is still a teaching channel. I will still be going at a speed that beginners can keep up with. Feel free to speed me up if that's too slow for you. I really don't have an issue with that. I'm also um, warning you that my tutorial is very up close. It's just my eyes on screen. So there's no other distraction around you. It also makes it easier for me when I'm wincing and, you know, stopping to gasp because the pain's just hit me. It's easier for me to cut those bits out without you realising there's actually a cut there. It also has the benefit that if you're watching me on a phone screen, you can still see what's going on, even if your eyesight isn't that good when you take your glasses off. I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute, which will be up close and personal again, where I talk you through how to work out the difference between deep set and hooded lids. Now, the way that makeup wears on those particular eye types is very, very similar, but the application method needs to be different for each type to get the best longevity and to get the best initial impact from your shadows. Now, I see even big experienced beauty gurus saying, I've got hooded lids and I look at them and think, no, you have deep set eyes. So, 
To avoid any confusion, the clip that I insert will talk you through very easily to work out whether you have deep set or hooded lids. Once you've established which type you have, it also tells you the workaround to get the best look and the most longevity for your eye type. Once that clip is finished, I will be back to insert and apply some of these colours to my eyelids. And I'm super, super excited and cannot wait because I've been wanting to play with this palette now for about two weeks. But uh, pain has stopped me. Not rain stopped play, it's pain stopped play for me. So uh, here's your clip and I'll see you at the other end of it. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm -hmm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid I'll close my eye. You can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. 
if you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. Right, <clears throat> I did stick the names of the shadows. I cut it out from the back of the cardboard box and stuck it on the front here. But if we call them one, two, three, four, five to eight, nine to twelve. Probably the easiest way to tell you because if you haven't kept the box so that you've got the names you won't know what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. I think I'm going to try doing a, high, a halo eye because I haven't done one of those for a while now. So I'm going to start off with uh, a Voldemorphy M506 brush which is a very very tapered Thank you, concentrate on the brush. Very, very tapered to a point, but it's looser than a pencil brush. It's not as stiff as a pencil brush. So I still have a bit of sort of flexibility there. So I'm going to start off by going into shadow number eight. And I'm going to pop some of this on the outer edge here. <clears throat> and again, do my usual. I do this um, because I've been having problems with my eyes recently, being very, very watery. So by flicking the edge up like that, it gives you the effect of a wing without actually having to do a wing. And if you are going to put a wing on afterwards, it kind of gives you a template to follow. I do tend to blur it off the edge here because I tidy up with a pad with some micellar water on, which you'll see when we get to that bit. Now I'm going to do, let me get my little mirror so I can see what I'm doing. Do the same thing on the inner corner here. Just pop that darkest shade on. Bring it up slightly. And then start to build it out as if you're going to link it together, but leaving a gap in the middle there. This is one of those looks which looks really scrappy until you're finished. That being said, I haven't done one for a while, so it could just be looking really scrappy when I'm finished anyway. Let's continue and find out. Now, with this eye, I do struggle. This is the eye that I'm blinding. And you can see I've got super deep crease in here. So whenever I put any pigment just here, I have to break my own rule about never pulling or stretching your lid. Uh, because if I don't, all that happens is the pigment sits loosely in those creases. And then throughout the day, it starts crumbling down into my eye and onto my face, which is both painful 
and on slightly. Shush now. I have to leave my phone volume on in case someone rings the doorbell. Because I have one of those electronic doorbells to make it a bit easier for me. Right now, I'm going to show you how I break my own rule but do it in a way that causes as little damage as possible. So I'm just going to mark where I need the blue to come to and then stretch it out just enough to straighten out the creasing. And I'm going to pop this on. You can see I'm doing circular movements rather than windscreen wipers. This is the Viennese Waltz blend. And the reason that we do this, or that I do this, is because if I do windscreen wiper, I end up... Okay, once it's done and you've got the pigment on, gently release it back, don't just let go. Yeah, I, I do um, Viennese Waltz, which is natural turns towards the nose and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do that is because if I don't, if I just do the windscreen wiper, which is this movement, uh, I have the issue that the lid folds over on itself, and that's when you get those telltale white sort of barcoding or pinstriping. Right, I'm going to clean the brush off on a clean washcloth that I have here. That shot open is a really good one. Hope it has. And if it hasn't, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day watching me have your breakfast, I hope your day is as fabulous as you are. Right, I'm going to go into the olive green, which is shadow number five, using the same brush as before. And I'm going to just blend this into the blue. Taking it about as far as I took the deeper blue there, but I'm now going to link that together with the green and also just pop a little bit of the green on the top here. I'm going to use a slightly different brush I think to blend it in. This is waggling the skin around too much on my lid for my liking. So I'm just going to place the colour with this brush and then I'm going to go in with a slightly larger looser brush. This again is a Voldemorphy M139. And without anything on this brush just going to blend that top, buff it out, and as I come down, just help blend the green and the blue together. like that. A little bit more I think. Just to deepen up that outer edge then. Sorry I'm not very talkative, I'm still in a fair amount of pain but I can I can sit for long enough to do this. 
which I wouldn't have been able to do before because obviously I'm on a, an upright chair rather than my nice supportive sofa that I've got in the front room and I'm really just using this to really blend that blue and green together I really like that I like that a lot hmm. so again I'm going to pop I'm just going to place this green and I'll blend it with the larger brush can you see what I mean about when I do that windscreen wiper how it it had folded over here and it's giving me a bit of a white stripe it's a dead giveaway I mean I'm Oh my god, I am 47 on Saturday. Okay. Um, and I've lost over 200 pounds. So, you know, the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers that have exactly the same issue as me in terms of flexible lids, shall we say. And uh, you know, it can be a genetic thing. If you have very firm lids at the moment, count your blessings, my dear, and pray that you keep them as long as possible. A bit more of grey. This is the larger brush again. The, uh, the 139. I'm going to use to buff that top edge out with. I, I'm, okay, who knew I was going to go for the olive green in this palette? How many of you have been watching me for long enough to know? I was either going to go for the green or the purple. No, I just I haven't done a halo eye for a while. So I thought, why not rock one for this? just to be a little bit different okay on my viewfinder this bit here still looks patchy but in my mirror it doesn't so I think it's one of those high definition issues again I've taken all of the pigment off of the brush I'm just going to over it one more time just to see if I can get it looking a little bit less scrappy on the camera even though it's not scrappy when you look at me in real life not hmm. now remember never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you will kill the pigment now I'm going to be using one of my cheaper sprays this is just a makeup obsession fix fit fixing spray you can use any kind of spray to wet the brush once the pigment is on it um, you can use a, a moisturising spray like you know, MAC, Mario Badescu. Um, you can use a priming spray, a setting spray, a finishing spray. You can even save an empty bottle and just put fresh water in it each day. 
Um, although I have found with, if I use a fixing spray, it does help with stopping the transfer too quickly through the day. It still transfers, but not quite as quickly. Right, I'm going to go into the green, which is shade number nine. Which I've got to be careful with, because obviously that's one of the damaged shades. I'm just going to pop that onto my brush. And then I'm going to spritz the brush. Now, this ferrule here is now wet, so tuck it into your knuckle and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here, loosening the bristles and uh, causing them to fall out because then you've just got a very expensive stick. Right, so I'm going to pop this just on the very edge of the green. In almost like an upside down V shape rather than in a parallel line. See that? And I'm going to do the same on this side. give the brush a clean. I don't use colour switches anymore because they were doing damage to my natural hair brushes. Right, and then I'm going to go into the gold, which is shadow number 12. Again, dry the ferrule. And then this I'm going to use just in the middle here to give a flash of light. Right, I will just show you how I neaten up my edges. Just put my camera back. I end up dropping it. Right, pad with my cellar water on. Get any excess off of the inner corner. And then just, just with the pressure of your finger, draw a straight line. And then obviously clean off any like so. And you can see that really gives a nice crisp finish. Now you could use tape or something like that, but the, thing, the, pro the way that I see it is if the tape is sticky enough to stop the pigment from going under the edge of it then it's going to be sticky enough to pull at that skin when you are taking it off which is the last thing you want you've seen how delicate the skin of your eye is so i'm going to pause you at this point and i'm going to go off camera and pop some foundation and base products and do my brows etc and I'll be back to finish off the under eye with you. I've got a little bit of time now before I get to chat to you again. But for you, my darlings, it's going to be completely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey, love.
lovelies, I'm back. Right, okay. As you can see, I've done my usual soap brows and I used shade number eight, this deep blue, just to to go through and, and tint them. Now for my under eye, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use the 506 to start with. And I'm going to start off with a little bit of gold. Just in the middle there. Underneath the gold. That's on the top of the lid. Then I'm going to go into shade 5, which is this matte olivey shade. And just pop a bit of that either side. I always flinch this side. Being blind in this side, obviously I don't have any peripheral vision. So I'm relying very much on muscle memory. And uh, a viewfinder that's a little bit too far away for comfort. Like a so. Right, for the underside of my brow, just going to grab this Spectrum A16 brush, and I've got the Ofra X Samantha March Start Inspired highlighter which is equal quadrants of Pillow Talk and Star Island. Now I've got Pillow Talk, haven't got Star Island but I thought this would be a great way to get it because then blending, I've blended the two together for my cheeks as you can see. But I'm just going to go into the Star Island section, so the, the champagne section just for under the tail of my brow here just to give it a little bit of a lift if you don't want to use um, a highlighter like this, you can always just use a matte shade that is light enough to give that reflection that you're looking for. And then for the inner corner, I'm actually going to go into the sparkly purple, which is shade number 10. I'm going to pop that just on the inner corner here, bring it round underneath just start to blend it in a little bit of that green there just to be a little bit different because you know me when do I ever follow the crowd right lovelies I'm gonna pause you one last time I'm gonna chuck some mascara on some lippy, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my finished look. So, again, you've got an instant, I've got to wait. See you right now. 
Hey lovelies, I am back. So this is my finished look using Viseart's Dark Edit. Um, as always, Viseart do not disappoint when it comes to their shadows. Um, super buttery mattes blended out without any problem at all. Uh, lovely shimmers. I have no complaints. Do I recommend this? Do you know what? Yeah, I do. One of the things I love about it is it's the size of my palm, but it has 12 shades in this. Compare that to some of these huge palettes you see. Um, things like the, the Mitchell ones and the Beauty Bay ones that have these huge, great, you, you know, unless you only have one eyeshadow palette, the chances of you actually hitting pan on a shadow, probably about the same as me fitting into a size 8 frock this side of next Michaelmas. In other words, damn sight slimmer than me. Um, once we start travelling again, this would fit into an evening bag, let alone an overnight bag. And yet it still gives you 12 colours to choose from. It still gives you a variety of tones. Um, we're hoping to go away sometime later this year, just for a long weekend. And I'll probably pack this, and just this, because that will give me enough options for day and for evening. And it's tiny, you know, it, it's, it's great, it's exactly what I look for in an eyeshadow palette. Great pigmentation, great blendability curated shades so you you know there's no shade in there that doesn't need to be there there's no shade in there that is so similar to another shadow in the palette you think well once they're on my eyes how are you going to tell the difference each shadow has its own worth and its own merit and you know there's there's plenty of looks you can do with that it's a good balance of eight mattes to four shimmers so it gives you a lot to play with and I know it's not a new palette, I know it's been around for a while but it's one that I've wanted for a very long time and I'm super happy that I've got it. Um, I know a lot of you have been asking me to tell you what else I've used on my face. Um, my foundation is MAC Studio Fix, I'm shade NC13. Uh, I'm trying to finish up this which I've got in shade C3 that I've had, you know, Redacted Cosmetics. I'm sadly using Redacted Cosmetics. That thing has a name. Um, I bought that when he first launched them, so I, I need to finish that up and get it out of my collection. The mascara today is the Maybelline Sky High. I like it now, it's dried up a little bit. It was a little bit too wet to begin with, but couple of weeks in, it's now great, love it. Uh, a highlight, obviously, I've already explained, is the Ofra X Samantha March Start Inspired. Uh, Lippy is the Uoma icon in my name. Even though I prefer Angie. Angela will do, it's what's on my birth certificate. Uh, and setting spray that I used today is my Gerard Slay All Day in Rose, which they did in collaboration with Nikia Joy. Nikia Joy, the Australian beauty guru. And I like it because it's not Old Lady Rose, it's Turkish Delight Rose, which is kind of making me want Turkish Delight now, which is not helpful because I have none in the house. And I'm wittering, but 
Get out of this day. Mm -mm. See what happens with my brain. This is what fibro does. My brain goes off for a walk and does many other things and then comes back and says, What were we talking about? Oh, yeah, makeup. That's what we were talking about. Honestly. But anyway, um, if you are looking to pick up Dark Edit and you're not sure, I really don't think you're going to be disappointed. Um, I'm absolutely loving this look. So much so, I might take a couple of pain pills and see if I can record a tag video. Because this look is too pretty to only be in one film. Right, my lovelies, <clears throat> and that's it for this film. Uh, if you're one of my usual crowd, some of my 4F family, please check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people still, but they are leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious that you've been deleted, naughty boys. Um, it's also worth checking your notification status because mine keep getting knocked back to personalised in which case I get nothing at all um, and that's true not just for me but for all the channels you follow please whenever you're watching one of their films just double check that you're still subscribed and that your notifications are still set to whatever you want them set to uh, if you're new here and you've tripped over me some other way hi hello Welcome. Um, I was going to say this is not my usual kind of film because I'm a little bit quieter, but it kind of is my usual film. Um, I Twitter on about everything and nothing, important things, non-important things, and eventually end up hopefully making some kind of sense. But I'm told that my voice is soothing, so people don't mind me wittering on about all sorts. Oh no, I want licorice all sorts. Anyway, if you'd like to join in the madness and the love that is the 4F family, because we are the nicest family, not on, just on YouTube, but on the internet, full stop. It's super easy to do. You hit that subscribe button and turn it red. The, no, you turn it from red to grey. I told you, it's been a while since I've filmed it. Hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually pull their finger out and send you some. In the meantime, as well as a rather large backside upon which I'm currently perched, I have a rather large back catalogue of other films you can watch. Um, I've got other tutorials and, you know, uh, palette reviews. I've got foundation reviews. I've got tags. I've got palette bingos. I've got collabs. I even read you my favourite poem in one of my films. So. If that sounds like the kind of thing that you're into, I've said it for what feels like millennia now, but give yourself some me time. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, get comfy and indulge with a coffee and a custard cream while you watch more of me wittering on at you. Enjoy. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you all stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.